Chapter 39, Akura's Vision, text number 29. 
Yashanna Raga Lalita Smita Vagu Mantra Lilava Loka Padirambana Rasa Ghostam Nithasvanakshanam ihashanada vinatham Nithasvanakshanam ihashanad vinatham Gopya katam yati Tita Rama Tamo Durantam Yashanuragam Yashanuraga Lalita Smita Vago Mantra Lila Valoka Padiram Pana Vasagustam Nitasmana Shanam Iva Shanada Vinatam Gopya Katam Yatita Rainmatamodurantam Yasyanuraga Lalita Smita Vago Mantra Lila Valoka Padiram Vanarasa Ghostam Nitasmana Kshanam Ibas Kshanada Vinatam Gopya katam yati tare matamo durantam Want to try? Yandaragali Tasmit the Vagu Mantra Yes, yeah. Who's Anuraga with loving affection? Lalita, charming, Smita, where there were smiles, Valgu, attractive, mantra, intimate discussions, Lila. Playful, Avaloka, <coughs> glances, Parirambana, and embraces, Rasa, of the Rasa dance, Gostam, to the assembly, Nityasma, who are brought, Na, for us, Shanam, a moment, Eva, like, 
Shanada, the nights, Vina, without, Tum, him, Gopya, of gopis, Katham, how, Mu, indeed, Atitarema, we will cross over. Tamaha, the darkness, Durantam, insurmountable. Translation, when he brought us to the assembly of the Rasa dance where we enjoyed his affection and charming smiles, his delightful secret talks, his playful glances and his embraces, we passed many nights as if they were a single moment. O oh, gopis, how can we possibly cross over the insurmountable darkness of his absence? Mm. The gopis are lamenting that now he's gone, and we had so many wonderful experiences with him, and they pass so fast. Now he's gone. How we will? How can we tolerate? the present situation. Purport, for the gopis, a long time in Krishna's association passed like a moment, and a single moment in his absence seemed like a very long time. Hmm. Verse 30, how can we exist without Ananta's friend, Krishna, who in the evening would return to Raj? In the company of the cowherd boys, his hair and garland powdered with dust raised by the cow's hooves. As he played his lute, he would captivate our minds with his smiling, sidelong glances. Sukadev Goswami said, after speaking these words, the ladies of Branch, who were so attached to Krishna, felt extremely agitated by their imminent separation for him they forgot all shame and loudly cried out, O Govinda, O Damodar, O Madhava. Purport. For a long time the gopis had carefully hidden their conjugal love for Krishna. But now that Krishna was leaving, the gopis were so distressed that they could no longer hide their feelings. Next verse. Even, but even as the gopis cried out in this way, Krura, Akrura, having at, at sunrise performed his morning worship and other duties, began to drive the chariot. Report. According to some Vaishnava authorities, Akrura offended the gopis by not consoling them when he took Krishna to Mathura. And because of this, offense, Kura was later forced to leave Dwarka and be separated from Krishna during the episode of the Shamantaka Jewel. At that time, Kura had to take up an ignoble residence in Varanasi. Apparently, Mother Yasoda and other residents of Vrindavan were not crying like the gopis, for they sincerely believed Krishna would be coming back within a few days. Omagyanti Midandasya Gyana Jana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manovistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kidam Mayam Dadati Swam Padanti Kam Tama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shrimakti Bhakti Tivaranta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavari Pacharine Nirvasesa Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine Panchakopa Tugascha Kupa Sindhu Bevacha Bhatitanam Bhagane Vyo Vaishnavi Vyo Namaho Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sivasiri Gaur Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare mm. So Bhakti is 
is to love Krishna and it's divided into two categories of that that loving mood and that one is called Vipralamba and the other one is called Sambhog Vipralamba means loving Krishna in separation and Sambhog means meeting Krishna and exchanging loving relationships with Krishna both <clears throat> are needed in order to enhance the other one the separation enhances the meeting, the meeting enhances the mood of separation. But of the two, the most intense emotions that are displayed is in the separation. It's just like when you have something and then you don't have it after a while, you feel the loss of that even more then the time when you have it, when you have it, you may not appreciate it. Again, example would be given that sometimes we have someone we know and then they leave the body and then we just regret having not spent enough time or learnt enough about that person to really take advantage of the time when we were together. It happens, it's called familiarity breeds contempt or breeds indifference, both. So here you see that this mood of separation is intense because it's the longing for the meeting. But when the meeting comes, it's so wonderful. But after some time, when the meeting continues, that a mode, mood of intense longing and love seems to kind of settle in into the activities and is not as intense. That's why Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu displayed and also taught that the mood of separation from Krishna is the highest form of bhakti because it causes one to hanker after Krishna and by that doing that one starts to feel detached from everything else except Krishna. <laughs> One loses their even attention on their material affairs. Sometimes you see persons who are great souls, they forget to do the day-to-day -day things that they need to do. Just like the gopis, when the gopis, <clears throat> they were so much intense upon uh, meeting Krishna and feeling such separation that when the time they came to meet Krishna, they couldn't even function properly. They were running out and putting their bottom of their clothes on the top of their head and the top, clothes, the top of clothes on the bottom. They were forgetting to take care of their, what was happening in the house. In other words, they just dropped everything. And in a very frantic, emotional like, display of love, they just ran to see Krishna. That's what the separation does. It causes that mood that when the meeting comes, it becomes an explosion of love. <laughs> but then you see, after some time, it settles down to a more even mood. You'll see that even in the material world, just like when we, we travel through the airports and we are getting off the plane and people are waiting for their loved ones and friends to come off the plane. So they're all anticipating seeing their friends and loved ones and then when they come there's just an emotional outburst of, them, of love, embracing, other things. And they all feel like it's just so nice. But then you'll see after some time everything goes back to normal. <laughs> It's just the way, the, just the way the nature is that when we have something that we really appreciate or actually love and we don't have it, just like they say, if you were, if you were never rich, you don't miss being rich. <laughs> but if you're rich and then you become poor, wow. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> then you, the pain of that loss is even more greater than never having it in the first place. 
never having it in the first place. So sometimes even people think, why should I develop relationships? Because when I develop relationships, I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through this m mood of separation and anxiety and loss. So why even develop relationships for people who think like that? So better to keep things in a very cool way, that way things just go on and there's gain and loss don't become such a, an emotional you know, roller coaster. But the gopis can't help it. They have so much love for Krishna that uh, when he's gone, uh, they can't function. They keep their love hidden, as it's mentioned here, but in this particular case, they displayed it by calling out Krishna's aims in a very, it said here, without all shame, any shame, they were just calling, crying out to Krishna. And so in this way, we get a little bit of an understanding of what is the mood of bhakti that is taught by the acharyas. And it's, <clears throat> to get to that stage, one has to engage in devotional service in the mood of wanting to meet Krishna in, this, in their service. This is, the, this is the mood of separation. That through my service, I'm trying to attract Krishna's attention, I'm trying to attract Krishna's association. And if I can do that, then my devotional service is successful. And keeping that mood, although Krishna's attention and association is not experienced, a neophyte devotee, or maybe just a regular devotee, will give up that mood. But an, but an advanced devotee will think, I just have to try harder, that's all. I have to serve better. I have to put more love. I have to put more attention in my activities. And in that way, you know, I'm, I'm actually chasing after Krishna. And Krishna really finds that mood very pleasing to him because then he can increase, he does that just to do that, just to increase the love of his devotees. But those who are not so advanced or even the materialists, when something doesn't come after a while, they, get, they look towards something else to fulfill that need of happiness or association. But the devotee will think only Krishna and if everything else doesn't happen, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so that's what the gopis are about. We get a little indication. But that's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's also. is his mood of teaching those who follow him that this is the mood of bhakti to hanker for Krishna and to serve Krishna with the mood of attracting Krishna by our service or attracting his attention, his association and pleasing him of course like that. We have another interesting point here. <clears throat> Akrura failed to console the gopis and then he simply drove the chariot away without even you know giving any attention to the gopis. And it says here, because of that, he was forced to leave Dwarka later during the separation, during the Shaman Chaka Jewel. I'm just reading that part in the Srimad Bhagavatam now, it's interesting. Uh, he, got, he got so far off, Kru is a pure devotee, but he got in a bad association with someone who wasn't, and because of that, they conspired to kill Satrajit in order to steal the jewel. And he got someone else, such a Dunvan, to kill Satrajit. He was more of a, you know, a person who would do that. And Kurura and Krita Varma, both of them were pure devotees and they encouraged you know, to steal the jewel. And after that, when, when Krishna found out Krishna was going to get Satyadanvan, so he came after him. Satyadanvan asked Kukrura and, and Kritavarma, please give me protection. They said, we're well, sorry, we can't because Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God. And we can't protect you, there's no way. And so Satyadanvan decided to leave and flee. But he gave the jewel to Akrura to hold. 
and then he ran on horse and then Krishna found out that he had left by horse Krishna chased him along with Balaram and they caught up to him and then Krishna killed him but Krishna was looking for the jewel but he didn't have the jewel and he was, he was wondering what happened to the jewel and Balaram he came and he decided to stay until it was, it was in Mathura that they caught him so he stayed with Mathura and Krishna went back and later on Krishna found out that the jewel was with Akura but he didn't, he didn't approach Akura he let Akura keep the jewel and Akura fled and he went to Varanasi and while he was in Varanasi he was performing different sacrifices using the jewel and giving all the opulences that was there given by the jewel to the local king in Varanasi at the time and performing many many sacrifices and so of course later on Krishna didn't get heavy with Akura because he knew Akura was a pure devotee but then finally Akura gave the jewel back to Krishna <laughs> and then Krishna took that same jewel and then gave it to hmm. this is a sometimes people say you know there's conspiracy theories well if you read the Bhagavatam there's lots <laughs> this is one conspiracy theory <laughs> Krishna is involved with a conspiracy he's being blamed for killing Satrajit he was he was blamed for killing Satrajit and stealing the jewel and he had to clear his his reputation Krishna was twice criticized in the wrong way once for stealing the jewel and the second time for killing Satrajit even the Supreme Personality of Godhead gets <laughs> gets implicated in wrong activities sometimes we think well I didn't do it somebody's blaming me for something I didn't do that happens to Krishna too <laughs> he gets implicated just see how uh, how people think I knew one devotee in Krishna consciousness he's a good friend of mine he used to tell me he's always he's always getting blamed for things he didn't do all the time <laughs> it was like a regular thing he'd somehow or other get because he was always around the situation but he wasn't the one at fault but he was just around so he would get blamed all the time so he he said this happens my whole life I can't figure out why I'm getting blamed for things I don't do and then he went to an astrologer to find out astrologer told him well in your last life you got credit for things you didn't do <laughs> so now you're getting the you know the opposite so in his last life he didn't he didn't do certain things and got credit for it and now this life he didn't do things and he's getting blamed for it. you see how karma works no one can escape their karma of course when you engage in devotional service there are you minimize the results of your karmic activity but sometimes the residue of karma still carries over even while we're devotional service that is called parabdha karma or that karma where Krishna allows you to see what you need to work on in order to make advancement in devotional service he allows that karma to manifest and you can see by your own experiences oh this is my problem or this is where I have to put emphasis on in order to progress in devotional service so that's that's the way karma plays itself out and if we become attentive to that then we can make advancement and we say oh yes this this is not favorable to devotional service or this attitude is not favorable to devotional service something so here you see and then you also go here that uh, Akura, you know, he's uh, yeah, bad association. They say that the process of fall down in devotional service works in such a way as one, 
you commit offenses to devotees. You commit offenses to devotees, then you find it difficult to associate with devotees. And then you take up association with the wrong kind of people in order because association is needed. And then by taking up wrong association, we develop wrong habits and wrong, and wrong mentality. And then we gradually to drift farther and farther away. And you see, just look, how many people that you actually know over the years don't come anymore. You don't see them anymore. We've all been here for so many years. Where are all those devotees that, have, that were here were so enthusiastic? Most of the time they just took wrong association and after that they gradually started to develop a different lifestyle and lost their enthusiasm for for spiritual life. So one has to be very careful not to commit offenses. But even if the one is not committing offenses, one has to be very careful not to take wrong association. Because wrong association influences a mentality that could grow into being critical of Krishna consciousness or even of devotees. So, but what is association? This is another uh, uh, understanding that requires some some explanations. Association means affection for. Affection for. In other words, if you develop affection for people or the activities that people perform in the material world, you're developing wrong association or bad association. So therefore we have to develop affection for devotees and at the same time develop affection for the activities of devotional service. And then if we find ourselves not in association with non-devotees but in the proximity of that area, we won't be affected and we'll see, oh, yeah, this is Maya. They're simply engaged in sense gratification. It's just a waste of time. Sometimes it looks exciting, you know. But because the materialists are always trying to make their boring life exciting by doing different things or bringing up different subjects. And if devotees get a little attracted to that, well, then they start investigating a little bit more and then find themselves, you know, you know going on the internet <laughs> and looking at things that really are not good. And we have to always keep good association. There was one situation where uh, it was in Croatia, one devotee, he was a brahmachari, and uh, he was out preaching, distributing books in the coastal areas during the summer when people were taking vacations. This is a good time for distributing books. People go on vacation, so he was out there, but he, was, he didn't have any association. So he was living in one little apartment that he would rent and go out and do books. But one day he was on the computer and he somehow hit the wrong button <laughs> and something came up which he shouldn't have saw. Now when, when that happened, somehow his mind developed some attraction for what, happened, what he saw and then he became interested a little. Then he realized he was in the wrong arena so he stopped it. But later on, he told me, he said, that affected him so much that he couldn't practice devotional service anymore. His mind was too disturbed. So you might say, well, that was an accident. But the, the problem was, he was without association. That's the problem. We always should stay in association with devotees. That's, that's important. Saru Sangha, Saru Sangha, Sarva Sastri Hoi. Labamatta Sarva Sangha Sarva Siddhi Hoi. The association of devotees can purify one. And therefore, developing affection for and the desire to serve the devotees is actually the mood of association. Hmm. Uh, we develop mm, affection for the non devotees or even the topics that the non devotees find interest in. Sometimes we look at the news just to see what's happening. <laughs> but if we get too much involved in that, then we find ourselves again in the wrong consciousness. 
and sometimes just for the sake of understanding. But that's still a dangerous area to go in. Therefore, one should hear and chant the glories of the Lord regularly. That's why we have this Bhagavatam class every day in order to inspire us in the pastimes of the Lord and his devotees. And this purifies the mind and attracts the mind towards Krishna. And by doing that, once our mind is attracted towards Krishna, we lose our attraction for the things of this world. We may have to deal with material people or material situations. We don't develop any real attraction or affection for that. It just becomes a responsibility. Say we have a job or we have to do some business in the local you know, city we have to associate with or interact with, not associate, interact with. And we just do it and then we go on with our Krishna consciousness. We're not attracted to that. In fact, we find it sometimes disturbing just being, just doing these things. <laughs> so, but that had, depends on the, the strength of our devotion. We, we keep good association with devotees and keep the mood of service, then we don't look outside for that. Uh, this lockdown that a lot of devotees are undergoing is causing devotees to feel a little bit lonely. It was like that in the very beginning of the lockdown during the year 2002-20 when people were practically locked down most of the time. We were, we were in Slovenia and we had a curfew every day at nine o'clock at night and every day everyone's off the streets till six o'clock in the morning and no one could go out in the streets and if you were caught you would get fined mm -hmm. um, and so we were mostly especially during the winter time which was difficult to go out anyway it was difficult just staying without what we say regular association and we found that we look for association in, by reading or chanting or, you know, on the, on the virile, on the Zooms or various types of association that way. And I kept the roadies going, but it doesn't substitute for actual personal interaction. You can't have the virile as the ultimate and say it's just as good as personal association. It's not the same. It's uh, somehow that media sort of minimizes the, the interaction of devotees in a real way. There is something there. It has some benefit. It's positive in, in so many ways, but it's not the same. <laughs> not the same. So we have to be, uh, and we have to be very much enthusiastic to take association with devotees and look for opportunities to serve devotees in that association. That's the most important thing. It's not that I come into the association to get served. I come into the association to serve. It's just like you're all listening to, to the class now. So that's how you serve. You serve by listening. And I serve by speaking. So we're both serving. If you're not listening, then you're not serving. If I'm thinking I want to get rid over this class so I can have breakfast, then I'm not really in the proper mood either. <laughs> so it's, we have to be absorbed in whatever we're doing in, in the, such a way and in that we create the association of devotees through that absorption and at the same time we actually bring Krishna into that association. Like that. Okay, so these are some simple points, but association, we see what happened to Akrur. Akrur is a great soul. He's Krishna's uncle, senior. He had such nice, so you'll see as Krishna and Akrur interact, this chapter goes on, and uh, the prayers by Akrur, you'll see how deep the relationship was and how much mercy Krishna gave him. But still, he went off. <laughs> He went off. So we have to be careful not to commit offenses or not to engage in the wrong association. It can happen even to 
very immune to happen to pure devotees. Okay, any questions or comments? Yes, Jai Baladev. Thank you for your class, Maharaj. Uh, my uh, question is regarding um, committing offenses and um, that may lead to um, hmm? committing offenses and um, that may lead to, as you say, um, accidentally... Becomes, it can become hard to associate with devotees. Mm -hmm. Then we look for association somewhere else. Yeah, and accidentally pressing the wrong button or purposely pressing the wrong button on a computer. So there's a nice, um, your, your, your statement, especially when you said familiar, familiarity breeds contempt. Um, there's actually one very nice purport, uh, but analogy in the uh, 11 cancel chapter seven, verse 45. It basically gives an analogy of comparing the Vaishnavas to fire. It basically says that if, um, we come close to fire, it can help us. If we come too close to fire, it can hurt us. And much is saying if we come close to the Vaishnavas, they can help us. If we become become too close or become too familiar, then those offenses um, can hurt us. And it the, the purport um, part of the purport says by Prabhupada disciples, to carelessly approach a Krishna conscious personality is just like carelessly approaching fire which immediately burns if not handled properly. Right. The Lord does not excuse mistreatment of a pure devotee. So my question is, is that sometimes devotees say, I leave Krishna consciousness because Maya is too strong. But we see in the Sobari Muni pastime that it wasn't that he married 50 women and became lusty because of Maya was too strong. Right, was, that was a reaction now. Yeah, it was a reaction to offenses. So can you speak about, um, and the Prabhupada also says that he was unaware of the offenses he committed. So how can we become free from he offenses that we're well, not he, aware of? He committed offense to Garuda. Hmm? He, he, he directly c committed offense to Garuda. And then he had to take up, you know, uh, residence in the... Uh, Garuda was, ta was taking fish out of the... And he, he started criticizing Garuda for doing that. So Garuda is a, you know, is, is Vishnu's carrier. He's actually a pure devotee. So that was his mistake. But he became conscious of, he, he knew he was finding fault with Garuda, but he didn't think it was wrong to do that. He thought Garuda's activities were wrong and therefore he could find, he could criticize. But Garuda is, you know, you can't criticize Garuda. He's, uh, you know, he's, he, he's Vishnu Shakti. <laughs> he's not Jiva Shakti. Yeah, so he made that huge apparat. And then later, when he saw two fishes copulating together, he became attracted to that. You know, that, that sounds a little far-fetched. How could seeing two fishes copulating could attract the mind of a great soul who's performing austerity? But, due to the offense, that's how it happened. <laughs> and he didn't have the power, the spiritual power, to withdraw his attraction from that. Yeah, and using that example. So the point you made is that, yeah, when we approach someone, a devotee, and not only pure devotee, but any devotee, we shouldn't be careless or insensitive or what we say. Uh, sometimes we, you know, we get close to devotees and we kind of like, you know, become very ordinary, you know, but we should be very careful how to deal with devotees. You know, we should be very friendly and without finding fault. And give res as soon as you lose respects to someone, then the whole relationship is lost. The whole thing is to keep respect. 
Well, we respect a person for who they are and what they are and what they are, then we can always have a nice relationship. Mm, doesn't mean, even though they may have faults, that doesn't matter so much. But as soon as we lose respect, then everything is changing. And we find fault or we become critical or we just say things that we don't really mean. Sometimes we joke around, that happens sometimes. <laughs> but we should be also careful not to become offensive. <laughs> yeah, so the whole thing is don't lose respect for others. Mm -hmm. We lose respect. We may not have an intimate association with others. But the Bhaktivinoda course is somehow I go on in this world because I give respect to everyone. Mm -hmm. That's Bhaktivinoda course. So respecting, what are we respecting? That within that body, the spirit soul is there. And in that body also Krishna is there also. So that's where the respect is offered to that soul, to the super soul. Yeah. That's Vaishnav culture. In the material world, people will respect others because it has it has some personal gain attached to it. Generally. Does that help? Thank you. Yeah. Uh um, pray Murti. Um, I was just thinking about the point that you men mentioned that a devotee falling down by doing book distribution on the coast. So I'm born and lived on the coast and I know how Maya is strong there, uh, this energy that you are surrounded with and ladies are half naked and all of these things. So I'm just uh, thinking also how this environment that we are choosing to live in or to work in is affecting our consciousness, you know, like uh, to, how to make proper choices, you know, also in our spiritual life that those things don't affect well, us. Well, you have to know, you shouldn't, Prabhupada said we have to sometimes take a risk in our Krishna consciousness, but we should not take a risk where we're going to fall down. He, he, he gave that cautionary statement. That take a risk for Krishna, like when, when you're preaching, when you're, pre when you're preaching, you take a risk. You have to meet people who may not be so favorable or even wrong. Their association is not good. Sometimes, you know, devotees go out and do book distribution at concerts and various types of social events. But the idea is that if you take a risk and then you become attracted to that, or somehow, even if not even attracted, you somehow or others get involved with the activities, maybe just by accident, then you weren't ready for that. We have to take, sometimes we say in, in bridge preaching, in bridge preaching means you have to build a bridge to a pe person who may be a little bit different in the way they live and what are their values. But then again, in building the bridge, you shouldn't fall off the bridge. <laughs> or they say, when you're fishing, don't fall into the water. Catch the fish, but don't go into the water. So these, these analogies help us to see how taking a chance for Krishna, and we should do that, but not probably not at the risk of our devotional service. Yeah, but then again, you have, that's not easy to see because sometimes in order to preach you have to take some risks, otherwise the preaching doesn't go on. But then again, is it for everybody? Well, we can actually say maybe not. <laughs> yeah. That's why we train devotees when they first come to hear, chant, follow the program, 
then we become more fixed and more in the philosophy and in the practice, and then they may be more ready to go out and do preaching. Yeah, but how do you know? You have to know. <laughs> Someone may, you can ask advice from others just to get, get a better understanding, but ultimately you have to see. You have to see. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, Thank you very much for your association, for being here, and this nice discussion this morning. Um, and as the discussion was progressing, <laughs> um, like s situations from my own situation are coming up uh, into my mind. And um, I have a very specific uh, question pertaining to my service. And um, fortunately or unfortunately, I have this role where I am. You have this role. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have this role okay. where I'm requesting um, devotees for services. I'm requesting devotees for services, mm -hmm. and they nod their heads. They say, yes, 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 and then the service doesn't get done. Hmm. So, that's, and, that's a feature of our life. Yeah. It happens all the time. Yeah, and um, it's, it's different, like when it's something personal, like, you know, I can forgive them and, like, you know, say it's okay and stuff like that. But, but now it's related to Krishna. So, you know, it's different when the temple is like left in a situation where it is not supposed to be because I relied on these people to do something and they agreed to it and now I have to go back and tell them you didn't do it. Like, so I'm in a very awkward position by going and, and it happens all the time. Like, I'm afraid I'll lose my devotional life by offending devotees, by telling them, you didn't do this, you didn't do this, you didn't do this, you didn't do this, you didn't do it, right? Like, Well, it's your role or your responsibility to give them the service? Yes, Maharaj. Well, if it is, then they should understand that you're the authority. And so they have to be accountable. But then again, if you see someone is not responsible and you don't want to give that person anything in the future, if you know that when someone bre breaks your trust or is not being responsible, you, you, don't, you don't go to that person anymore. And they have to come to you if they actually want to change. Now you might say, well, there's a shortage of persons and then Sometimes we don't know what to do because there's no one else available. <laughs> we have to teach people, I think also we have to teach people responsibility. Mm -hmm. and this is part of, uh, because responsibility is the foundation for spiritual advancement. As Prabhupada actually made a statement. He said, you make advancement in Krishna consciousness by how much you take on responsibility in Krishna consciousness. That's an exact statement. So people want to do things, but sometimes situations change after they agree, and then, then they find themselves stuck. <laughs> Well, should I go ahead and do it at the expense of what I want to do or I have to do? So I think it takes a little bit more of a thorough prelude to really, before you give them the service, really get a commitment from them 
ahead of time that you know we've had examples in the past that we would give this service to others and they don't do it so please if you're going to accept this service you have to do it and if you have any problems with the service or something comes up please see me don't just not do it <laughs> You can speak like that. Right, I'm, I'm sure Sunil can talk about this all all day, right? You got people that work for you, right? <laughs> yeah, you depend on them to do things, right? And then they're out on the coffee break, right? <laughs> so a manager, or a you know, person who's running a corporation, or someone who's a managing it responsibility, they you know they have to give the service, but they also have to support the people that they're giving the service to and make them, and don't just say, well, you do this and then leave it at that, you know. Mm -hmm. You make them feel that you're there to help them if there's any, you know, reason to. That'll avoid, and may avoid, some of the problems afterward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've gotten quite angry many times when that happens, where I usually give responsibility and people don't do it. Well, what I've done, I had a, well, I have a project that I'm working on, so I've been giving people part of that project to work, and they're not doing it. So I just take the project and give it to somebody else. And they're still thinking they're on the project. <laughs> and they just do it like once a year, you know. It's a, <laughs> So one, one person was doing it, and I just took it away from her and gave it to someone else. And she said, oh, it's done? I said, sure is. <laughs> I asked you a hundred times when you're going to do it, and you keep saying, I'm doing it. <laughs> but you're not. <laughs> I go through this all the time. Hundreds, I mean, you're, you're just like in the junior league to, compared to what I have to do. <laughs> But then again, we take that chance. We have to take that chance because the work needs, the service needs to be done. And sometimes there is just not someone to do it. But then again, we look for backups and for people who are, who may be able to fill in when it doesn't go through. Or you remind the people in a very nice way, like that. Or you check on them to see how it's going. Just, but always be pleasant. You know, you can you can tell someone that they're off in a in a nice way. I mean, if you get angry, and that makes the whole situation kind of pull, that becomes the issue, the anger, and not the service anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maharaj, uh, I, I still want to ask because that will make me feel more complete. Um, so some of the times, like, it's not directly related to me or what I'm working with, but it's some senior devotee who um, agrees to a service and, like, you know, they, they just nod and say, yes, yes, we'll get it done, this will get done, this will get done, this will get done. And I'm in such an awkward situation because um, I, I cannot, um, it's improper for me to overstep and say like, you know, you, you have done this again and again in the past. So it's better like someone else takes care of it. I cannot do that. You could also find someone else to talk to them mm -hmm. and also remind them who may be someone who's on their level of practice. Mm -hmm. If you call them senior, you want to find someone who's on their level to remind them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I find it awkward all the way through, Maharaj, because they say they will get it done, it's not done, and then we are here at the temple and we cannot see this situation for Kishore Kishori. Yeah, just like look at the temple. The temple is really a mess. Nobody cleaned after last night. You can see flowers and dirt all over the place. So we, we yeah. end up like doing it, but it's too much for us to take care mm. of this like little details that are left everywhere. Mm. And you know, it's Kishore Kishori's temple. And 
we cannot take it and at the same time we cannot complain because it's breach of yeah. etiquette yeah if it's it depends now if it's that person's responsibility to do it that's one thing but if it's not and the service can be handed over to someone else look in that direction also because we have a large congregation here and there are people who are willing to do service if you ask them and there are people who are responsible some times you a person is responsible but they just they're doing too many things and they just put aside the things that you ask <laughs> or for whatever reason they choose so I think if you try to be a one-person manager you're gonna fail you need a team to organize the managing and that way you get support and you also get a uh, facility that when you give service you have a whole system behind you so maybe there's a lack in the in this the managerial structure that'll make it much easier for you you're not just talking from your own perspective you've been given this role and you have to get people to do it are oh, you talking from that I'm, I'm representing this you know this this group of devotees who are in a re uh, we are a team and organizing things and therefore you can also go back to them for support and assistance when things don't happen and you can expect this will happen just the way it is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have it all the time I can give you a whole list of the people and right now who are supposedly supposed to be doing things for me <laughs> to just not <laughs> so uh, but what I do is I don't give them stuff that's emergency you know stuff that has to be done I give them long-range stuff and that way I can juggle that a little bit the stuff that I need done you know right away then I make sure a more responsible person like I have one Mataji who assists me in, in Slovenia she's expert and not only expert at getting things done if things don't happen she'll do it herself and she'll go out of her way to make sure it happens she's dedicated she's so dedicated to the service it doesn't matter it'll get done it doesn't matter what she has to go through to do it she'll do it so you want people like that we want to create the worries who have that commitment that they when they commit themselves to something they put their you know everything that's 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 character like that and she doesn't even speak good English <laughs> but she's always expert at doing everything I mean she makes some mistakes but if I even point out her mistakes she's immediately apolog apologizing or you know giving making up for the mistake immediately she is responsible very responsible and she has that dedication because it's her devotion that's the motivating force not simply her position if it's the position then people will move slightly right left and right and use their position but when they're motivated by devotion that's a whole different thing Is that enough? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, please pray for me, Maharaj. That's all I can say. Because I cannot see it, I cannot do it, and I'm very scared of I'm already committing a lot of offenses. You have I to use that. you have to use some trickery and some ingenuity and some interesting way of delivering your message you really if you go straight on it's not going to work
what can you do? Um, Krishna Archana, she had her hand up. Yeah. Um, Maharaj, the um, particular situation where um, <clears throat> uh, Akura is in fact separating the gopis from <clears throat> their in-person service to Krishna. Um, <clears throat> so he doesn't take that into account when he's coming to perform his uh, duty to Kamsa of bringing Krishna to Mathura. So, with the gopis. Uh, Mm. With the gopis, right? With the gopis. Yeah. With the gopis. Um, <clears throat> so that kind of um, situation of um, severing um, some persons from their service or cutting that uh, service, um, I mean, in the case of the gopis, they're not separated from Krishna even with his not being physically present, but the physical service, so to speak. Um, and so that kind of severing of service in the uh, physical form, um, it's, it has so many repercussions on an emotional level. And so I, um, I guess I wanted to know um, um, in practical terms, uh, um, is there perhaps a, um, a justification in any way for the severing of a very carefully performed or um, uh, yeah, carefully performed and caring service on the part of somebody? Is there any justification for a service like that to be severed? The person is very caring and they have a service, but there is some reason to cut that. <laughs> and what is the reason? They're not competent? <laughs> They're not responsible? Is there any... Well, that's a managerial problem. I think to give an answer, the yes or no, it doesn't justify the question. You have to see the situation. And you have to also see the person involved. And then a decision can be made by those who have that authority based on the person and the, the, the situation. But there may be justifications to do that. There are, yeah, and there may not be. Again, the situation warrants the the observation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes by doing that, that increases the, the enthusiasm of the person who becomes cut. And they uh, start to realize that they took advantage of something and now they lost it. Yeah, it's, mm, there, I would give you a tentative yes on that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think the situation is there. Okay. Oh, uh, we have uh, Chitendriya Prabhu. Okay. This is the last question. Okay. Today's your last day, right, Maharaj? Yeah, I'll, I'll be back later, about another month from now. Oh, okay. I was just thinking, uh, Prabhupada said, he said, it's not that Maya is so strong, but that our, it's that our purpose is weak. Yeah. That's and uh, I always like that. And then uh, another thing I was thinking, uh, I kind of categorize people that are, you know, actively engaged in service, actively engaged in service, or giving lip service. 
uh, like life members or dead members. So that's the way I kind of look at people. I'm not trying to be critical, but I just kind of see them that way, you know. Well, he's alive today, but, you know, it just kind of uh, goes in my mind like that. I always try to give people the benefit of the doubt, but, you know. Yeah, I, I can see that, and you really don't have any choice, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Prabhupada said that uh, everybody here is on a volunteer basis, pretty much, unless they're getting paid, you know. So that's a different motivation. It's a different motivation. But, uh, you know, I mean, I don't have any objection against somebody getting paid. You know, it's just that uh, they have things they have to deal with. You know? Yeah. You want to give people service on the level they can do it. Yeah. <laughs> and so. so I'm not be trying to be critical in that way, you know. No. If you're in charge, it's not a matter of being critical. It's, it's being uh, somewhat observant to see what what will work and what won't work, you know. And I like Prabhupada said, I think he said, the perfection of management is to delegate. Right. So if you can get people that can, you know, rise to the standard, then it's a smooth sailing ship. Yeah, that's the whole thing. Thank you very much. Management means delegation. Yeah, Prabhupada said, I'm just one man, what can I do? You know. Well, you have to develop that relationship where the delegation actually becomes, you know, a commitment. Yeah. Thank you. If they don't like you, then it's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If they like you, there's no problem. <laughs> and I, delegation is easy. <laughs> uh, to, if they like you, that's they say that's quality control. <laughs> if they don't like you, they say he's a control freak. <laughs> <laughs> it's correct. <laughs> okay. If you take sannyas, then you only have to worry about is controlling yourself then. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai.